You know, I saw an interesting fact the other day. Over 40% of homes now have offers made on them without the buyer ever stepping foot inside. Sometimes that sounds like a frightening statistic. Well, stay tuned today and find out how to make that a little less frightening. Hey everybody, it's Eric here, and let's talk about buying a home that you never stepped foot in, because sometimes you don't have a choice. Uh, many situations where you don't get to come and see your home. Uh, let's say uh, right now during the pandemic, you're not allowed to go into a home where you have a renter until you make an offer on that home. Other cases, and I've done this one with plenty, uh, is a relocation situation where you do not have a chance to do a uh, house hunting trip. Let's say you're in the military and you're stationed in Italy or England or Germany or Japan. You may not be able to get away, especially in this day and age where we have quarantines. So you may have to go someplace and do 14 days of quarantine. Then we have to get back and do 14 days of quarantine but you desperately want to move into your place and not keep doing this quarantine thing back and forth and get on with your life and get on with your job. So I'm going to go over some of the things that you can do to make this a smoother transition for you, especially when you're trying to move into the house of your dreams as soon as possible and some of the things that you can do. So one of the first things you need to do is research. Research, research, research. There is nothing more important than research when you are not there. Fortunately, we have this great little secret tool. You ready for it? Are you sure you're ready? It's called Google. Google that stuff. Uh, Google has a trove of information. If you haven't heard about it before, where you can find out just about anything about everything. And the first one I suggest is a tool called Google Maps. And they have something called Street View. I'm being facetious, man. I'm being facetious. Uh, take that Street Maps, and I've talked about it before. On the bottom right-hand corner, you will always find the date that that Street Map was taken. So you get to know what that neighborhood looked like on that date. And I've seen this time and time again. You go to some place and the buyer's like, oh, I don't like this neighborhood. We don't, let's not even go in. It's like, um, that's what the neighborhood looked like um, on the street map because the street map was taken three months ago. So you're wasting your time, your time. If you're not taking those minutes before you even go out if you're just looking at some pictures on a house of a house and you're like, oh, that's cute. Don't just look at a house pictures because they're cute because there's this great little thing called Photoshop or this great little thing called somebody cleaned up the house right real quick. Look at the neighborhood because just because the house is cute doesn't mean you want to live in the neighborhood. What the house looked like on the street map view, it's possibly what the neighborhood is going to look like when you drive, go there that day. So, nice clue, Bird. Uh, look up what the crime rates are. Just about every city now puts their crime rates online. You can see if you, uh, people in your neighborhood are caught, uh, call them, cause a lot of burglaries, a lot of car thefts. It's not a surprise to you. The data is there. So use that data. Uh, let's say you're of a belief where you don't want to own a house where someone recently passed away in it. Did you know there is a website for that? So everything that you want exists on the World Wide Web and Google. You have something in your, your possession that tells you everything that you need. So use it. Use those resources if you don't know a website, ask your real estate professional, ask your realtor, ask your lender. Uh, they may have the answer for you. 
sometimes they can't give you the answer because there are certain things that you're, we're not allowed to tell you and it's just their law so we have to follow uh, but you're allowed to find those things out yourself so if you go if we're the provider of the you know the source of the information not the source of the information that's fine I can lead you to a website where somebody may have talked about who's passed away in a house you know what I mean so look for that information if you need it just about everything you want to know about that neighborhood I can't go in there and go like oh uh, three doors down by the way is uh, Boo Boo the Fool who is a sexual predator if you care about that because of members in your family there's a website for that so you can do that research who the predators are in your neighborhood uh, all that stuff it's there just for the taking you can do that research especially if you're not here okay so do the research do the research do the research this can be the most uh, uh, one of the largest financial transactions in your life so take care of that okay next thing be wary of scammers there are a lot of scams out there there hasn't been a day that a scammer wasn't born because there was a sucker born that they can scam and housing is the best one because you know what there's a lot of money in scamming you can place three card money all you want count cards all you want you're not gonna make as much money as scamming someone in real estate and there are a lot of real estate scams out there Oh no! I have personally not seen someone taken for eight hundred thousand dollars in a real estate scam the scam they did is they basically uh, stole the person's email so what they do is they'll hijack an email and they'll sit there they have your password and it could be somewhere anywhere in the chain and they sit there and they just wait they're waiting for something big they're waiting for something big they're not doing anything they're waiting until the big fish comes along and that big fish was somebody buying a house and they're paying cash eight hundred thousand dollars and then when they got the instructions on where to wire the money to had them it's even harder when you're overseas even harder when you're across the country because it takes you longer to figure it out so you can't try to claw your money back there are other scammers out there too where they'll take a house that has already been sold or is no longer on the market because remember, your pictures exist in this place called the internet forever. So they can take those pictures, check the description of your house, and then they can put out an ad for sale by owner. They can put it on Craigslist. Heck, they can put it on Zillow, put it on Facebook Marketplace, put it on for a low price because you think you're getting a bargain and then there you come along I'm getting a cash bargain then they could say something see th this is the one where it shocks me See, you're saving money because you're not using a real estate agent and I'm not saying this because I'm trying to get a commission or anything I'm saying this because that's how a scammer works if they're convincing you that you're saving money because you're not getting a, because you're not using a real estate agent why are they trying to convince you so bad now, if they say, yeah, you can use a real estate agent all you want. I'm not going to pay for it. And your real estate agent's like, well, let's bargain. Let's do something. That's different. They're saying, no, no, don't use a real estate agent so we can save money. Could it be they're trying to keep the real estate agent out because they don't own the house? And the real estate agent, when they do their due diligence, will find out they don't own the house? So beware of a scammer because if it's looks too good to be true it probably is because I've said this a few times in the past if it's really truly a bargain there are people out there who are ready to take that bargain trust me you're not gonna find uh, something that's 50 cents on the dollar that an investor who is sitting out there and that is their job isn't going to find first or snatch from under you.
So be wary of great deals. They may come around and you may somehow beat that investor, but they're rare. So be very, very careful. The next one, sometimes you feel like you don't want to ask any questions or you don't want to sound like you're asking a stupid question. When I'm spending my money, I don't care how stupid I sound. Ask all the questions you want. I would be careful of somebody who is going, <sighs> he's asking me questions again. Why are you asking me so many questions? Oh, no. Because you're supposed to be asking questions. You're spending a lot of money. You may be spending all the money you have in the world. You need to have those questions answered. You need to have them answered by your real estate agent. You need to have them answered by your lender. You need to have them answered by title. If they're not answering your questions, next. I'm serious. Don't put up with somebody who's going <sighs> like you're a bother to them. I'm too busy. I'm big time. Don't worry about them. Find somebody who's not big time who knows enough to answer your questions. Okay? I, I don't want to sound preachy or scolding, but I'm just telling you if you're spending two, three, four hundred thousand dollars on something, they're getting a commission. Now, I'm going to back it up just a little bit on this one. I mean, I know I'm talking mainly to people who are relocating where you need a little bit more guidance because you're not here. But sometimes uh, people get a little bit what you call cheap. And you're looking for somebody to, uh, I don't know, give you a kickback and stuff. And you're like, can I get a little percent back? Can I get half your commission? Those are the ones who are going, huh. Because you were expecting Cadillac service at the Yugo dealership. If any of you remember Yugo. When you did that, expect, huh. I'm going to leave it at that. Anytime you expected a, a bargain, anytime you asked for money back, they were expecting you to be a professional. You see, like these investors, when I was talking about people expecting bargains, they always want money back from their real estate agents. Thing is, they know what they're doing. They never call their real estate agents asking for anything because they're doing a lot of the work themselves. So if you're asking for money back, you're expected to do the work yourself. If you're not asking for money back, they're expected to do the work. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for a service. But if you're not asking for money back, you're expecting to pay for a service and they're expected to do their job. But if you're trying to bargain hunt, I'm telling you this one right now, if you're looking for bargain hunt, you're saying like, can you give me like half your commission to help pay my closing costs? Can you give me some money? Then expect a little bit of huh. Okay? I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. So, there are no dumb questions when you're paying for a service, even though you're not paying for it. Somebody's paying. And they're paying for professionalism. So let your agent, let your lender, let everybody else. They're supposed to be professional with you and all of your dealings. Okay? So don't put up with it. If they're not being professional, that's what they're paid for. Okay? Let it happen. Who wants to be a millionaire? Love that show? You know what? I never saw it all the way through the end. All I know is I'm from Slumdog Millionaire because I love that movie. And here's the thing. You know you got a lifeline? You can call a friend. Now, when I was in the military, we had this thing called the sponsorship program. And I'm assuming it still exists today because I haven't been out that long. Where you have somebody in the squadron that you're going to who's gonna help you in your move. You know, when I was a sponsor, I've done some interesting stuff for folks like sit at their house to take deliveries. I can go to a house that someone is buying and I don't know, when they're having an inspection, maybe like look around for them and help them out. Give them my opinion. Would you buy this house? 
You got a real estate professional that's being paid, even if they're being paid by the seller. Remember, if you use a buyer's agent, even though the seller is paying them, they legally work for you. And don't fall into this trap about using the uh, listing agent because you think you're going to save money. <sighs> That's the biggest misnomer in the world because the listing agent legally, legally works for the seller. Everything you tell them has to go into the seller's ear. AK, you're fighting with one hand behind your back and the other one tied to your leg. Get yourself an independent buyer's agent, especially if you cannot be here because you'll then have no one looking out for you and someone telling your secrets to the enemy. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But if you get yourself a buyer's agent, someone is at least looking out for your, uh, your best interest. And if you have a friend in the area, a relative, have them go with the realtor. Uh, if the realtor has an issue with that, uh, next. Unless you have that busybody, I I'm going to be honest. So, some, sometimes you got that aunt, that cousin, you know, somebody who may not want your um, success in life, a.k.a. buying a house unless they're going to live in a house. I, I, I have a few stories, and they weren't... Um, turning off houses because there was anything wrong with the house. It's just they had an interest of the house being someplace else, a.k.a. the person buying the house who was going to be living in the house also and making payments on the house, wanted this in the house, and they were going to let this relative live in the house, but the relative want this, and they would sabotage the deals to make sure that they got what they wanted. So be very careful of that one. So if someone is going to be living in the house and not making payments, um, just be careful. Just be careful. I don't like getting involved with family. Because even in the uh, couple of cases where I've seen that happen, I, I just let it go, okay? I just let it go. I'm just saying it happens. It happens, okay? Next, make that inspection. Uh, even if you can't make it in person, uh, especially when you're not there, ask your agent to be there. A lot of agents don't show up at the inspection. If you're not going to be able to be there, Ask your agent to be there for you and find an inspector who will out brief you, not just send you a PDF of what they found that will actually like go over it with you. We live in a new age, a new digital age. There's this magical thing called Zoom. Have them get on the video and go through that with you and point out things that should be fixed, must be fixed because again, you need to have those things fixed. A big thing people don't understand about inspections, when you get a home warranty, which you should get, when something goes wrong, a house is a breathing mechanical thing, a lot of things are probably gonna go wrong in the first year. I hate to be the one to tell you that. Uh, the first thing they're gonna ask for is a copy of the home warranty. If you ain't got one, there's a good chance they ain't gonna cover it. So get that home warrant, I mean, get that home inspection and make sure you have somebody who's going to outbrief it. When your um, realtor suggests someone for a home inspection, say, are they going to brief me on the home inspection? If they do not uh, do a Zoom briefing with you or something, say next, okay? Take care of yourself. Finally. You don't have to sweat the closings anymore. Used to be, uh, oh my goodness, if you've ever closed remotely, it used to be kind of a nightmare because, I mean, it's, it still can be because sometimes what they'll do is a uh, remote closing where they'll send uh, a notary out to you. They still do that. That can happen. 
And um, kind of a lucky thing that's happened is because of the era we live in now, a lot of the title companies don't want you in there. And it's dependent upon the lender, what type of lender you have. A lot of the lenders now will allow for electronic signature. Before, they wanted the old, what they call wet signature. They wanted a pen. They wanted you writing it down because they wanted someone there. Uh, they have started to waive that a lot lately. And you may want to check with your lender and your uh, title company slash escrow company or if you're on the East Coast, the lawyers. Uh, to see if they're waiving that now. So what they're doing is doing it face to face via a secure video system and they actually see you electronically signing. So they can't say that you weren't there or you can't say that. So that's why they wanted the wet signature so you can't say I didn't sign that document. Well now they have the video confirmation and it's probably better that way. You know I didn't sign that. That's not my signature. Is that your face? So, uh, with what's going on in the world now, this may be the new standard, even after they find a vaccine or this goes away mysteriously. This may be the new standard. So, long term, we're going to see what happens. You can protect yourself if you're in that 40% who puts in that offer. I'm going to be honest. 40% who are putting in the offers house a sight unseen. Some of those is because there are renters in the house. That's the issue. Some of it's because there's a shortage of housing now. And you don't want to take a chance of losing a house. I've already had people call me on houses. It's like, what can we do to put in offers on these houses? And they're in other states. They want to put in an offer and then when it gets accepted, they want to get on a plane to come here and look at it. It's what's happening now. So uh, these are some of the things you can do to protect yourself. Because even let's say they put in an offer on the house, flew all the way here to see it, and then they don't like it. What did they spend on plane tickets? At least if they came here and they did these steps, they got a better way, I mean, at least a better odds of, you know, not going, oh, I just wasted all this money on a plane trip. So I hope these tips help you. If you like what you're seeing, remember, haven't missed a week yet. I said it every week, every week. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you've been watching, don't keep lurking. Hit that thumbs up button. Help a brother out. Help the YouTube uh, algorithm. Keep showing these. Help me grow and blow up because I'm the nuke and I'm blowing it up in real estate. See you guys later.